Aloha. Welcome to American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And today's title is, for the show, Representative Dean Phillips Wants Biden's Job. Who's Dean Phillips? Well, Dean Phillips is a third-term uh, representative from the House of Representatives, and he's from Michigan, Minnesota, excuse me. And he has thrown his hat in the ring to challenge President Joe Biden for the next uh, presidency of the United States. Uh, why is he doing it? Well, we're going to discuss that and many other things here. And with me today is my co-host, Jay Fidel. Morning, Jay. Morning, Tim. Jay, do you know who Dean Phillips is? Not until about a week ago. Um, but there was a, a long article, I want to say the Washington Post, but it could have been the New York Times, a, a long article um, sort of introducing him. And he's a pretty appealing guy. Uh, I have to tell you, he's Jewish. And, and, and these days, when we have national anti-Semitism, that could be a problem in any event. Um, but he's a good guy. He's got the, his head screwed on right. He's got the right ideas about the government, how to handle things. Uh, he's rational and good-natured. Um, and uh, it's a shame that he has no chance whatsoever. Well... Yeah, let's discuss the uh, the details. Um, he has voted with Joe Biden, I think, 100% of all Joe Biden initiatives. Yet here he is to challenge him for the role of presidency in 2024. Uh, to what degree? Well, let's let's see what he said. He said, basically, he, he thinks that Joe Biden's too old. And that's, uh, that's a problem, because uh, his his popularity numbers are low. And most Democrats think that Joe Biden should not run for a second term in 2024. So that's his motivation to to put his hat in the ring. He also said, or he's implied, he hasn't said it explicitly, that he wants to encourage other candidates to run uh, to secure the nomination. He, I think he mentioned that into the publication, The Hill. Uh, your thoughts about his motivation, and um, we'll talk about the impacts here in a second, but your thoughts about his motivation? Well, I think it's thoughtful. I mean, it's it's not off the wall. Um, and uh, I mean, he believes uh, that, you know, that you need a younger person um, to run on the Democratic ticket and um, young, younger, more vital, what have you. And you and I have talked about this for months, uh, even years. And, and yeah. so uh, he's filling in the, what do you want to call it, the age and fragility gap or trying to. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think it means anything, really, as long as uh, Biden is healthy enough to perform. Um, he's he's going to win the Democratic nomination, and, and uh, Phillips is, is uh, spitting in the wind here. Um, I wrote to one of my political gurus. I said, do you think that uh, Phillips has a chance? And the answer was, nope, N-O-P-E, full stop, that simple. Um, and you know, that's, and that's the problem, you know, and and maybe he's thinking, and I and I think that probably uh, Newsom is thinking the same thought, is that he, he wants to be there on the stage just in case Biden should, you know, have a medical problem or what have you, or be unable to, you know, continue. He wants to be there so the Democrats are not, you know, uh, left out. The, prob the problem is that um, he could draw off votes. Uh, well, actually, no. no. That's what I thought at first. He could draw. No, he, he's going to lose the primary, and that'll be that. Yeah. And the people who might vote for him would then go and vote for Biden, I think. And so it doesn't make any difference in the general election that he's trying it. Maybe he's just trying to excite things, you know? He's trying to show that there's somebody else. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the Democratic Party is going to vote for Biden. Well, typically, you know, especially I'm remembering candidates opposing Ronald Reagan, uh, where, you know, they they bludgeoned the the existing president, and that bludgeoning during the primaries actually hurt the president uh, during the, the, the general election. Excellent point. Because what, you know, what is the contention uh, between Phillips and, and Biden? It means that mm, somebody has to attack the other guy. And uh, Phillips is going to attack Biden, and, and that attack could, you know, soften votes that might otherwise go to Biden in the general election. 
Well, I think the attack comes in the form of Biden's, again, Biden's popularity and poll numbers and certainly his age and his <clears throat> his existing health. And so that could, yeah, I, I agree. That could really damage Biden further uh, in the 2024. But, you know, Donald Trump is no uh, spring chicken either. And uh, he's had his major gaffes uh, of, of recent when he's on the campaign trail. And we'll talk about some of those later. But I wanted to point out that uh, that he has retained a serious contender as far as his political advisor, and that's Steve Schmidt. You may remember Steve Schmidt. He was the campaign manager for um, for John okay. McCain. Mm -hmm. And he was also campaign manager for George Bush. And uh, you know, and he's noted for his his involvement with the Lincoln Project and his many interviews coming out against Donald Trump and the misogyny of Donald Trump. So, uh, no lightweight that has taken on this this role to uh, be his campaign manager and advisor. Your thoughts about uh, wh where that would stand with uh, this candidate, Mr. Phillips? I think it's, it's likely to help because Schmidt is a very smart guy, very articulate guy. He brings uh, two pieces of baggage with him, though, that, that have to be uh, included in the calculus. Number one is that he's the guy that found Sarah Palin um, for uh, the vice presidential candidate under McCain. And that was a horrendous mistake, horrendous. McCain could have had a much better chance uh, without Palin. She was an idiot. I'm sorry. Um, the other... The other um, uh, baggage that he has is that the Lincoln Project, he was a founder of the Lincoln Project, um, and he was a great spokesman for the message of the Lincoln Project, uh, the sort of Republican turned Democrat <laughs> kind of message. And he, he did some brutal attacks against Trump. But they got into trouble. Something went wrong in the, in the, Link, in the Lincoln Project. They had internecine fights about something. I don't know what it was. Um, and he quit or was thrown out. And that was the end of him and his big connection with the Lincoln Project, which I admired at the time. Mm -hmm. Sort of like a Liz Cheney group, you know, right. the former Republicans. But mm, uh, in terms of his, you know, his smarts and his experience, uh, he's a great he's a great pick for Phillips. You know, of recent, um, he's gotten in trouble with uh, some heavy hitters in the Democratic Party, specifically um, Representative Jib Clyburn. Uh, what um, what I understand is that uh, Dean Phillips has decided to go to New Hampshire for that primary, which, by the way, doesn't give you any delegates towards your nomination for the uh, candidate. Uh, but he decided to go there versus South Carolina. And so the bottom line is when you have a heavy hitter like Jim Clyburn, who, by the way, was the one that was able to turn Joe Biden's disastrous campaign around uh, just before Super, Super Tuesday, uh, in 2020, or 2019, excuse me, um, that he was the kingmaker. And I don't know if, if, if his name still represents him being a kingmaker or not, but uh, so early in his campaign uh, for candidacy, when you have a heavy hitter like Jim Clyburn come out against you, what do you think that says? I think he would have come out against them anyway. Uh, I mean, Cly Clyburn likes Joe Biden. He made Joe Biden, as you say. He is a kingmaker. And uh, if, it, if, if it wasn't the choice of states, it would be for the primary or the, or the opening of the election, whatever. Um, it's something else. Uh, you're right, though. Clyburn is a very powerful man. And he's, you know, still at the top of his game. When he gets up there on uh, national TV and gives you a message, you listen. Um, he is, in many ways, the heart of the Democratic Party right now, um, mainly because he made he made Joe Biden. But um, I he think also is his co-chair for re-election. Mm, well, that's powerful. Yeah, I, I I think there'll be others too. You know that will migrate away from Phillips and uh, migrate to Biden and stand up for Biden on this. So Phillips does, doesn't does really have a chance when you talking about the old old timers, you know, and the old timers are in the Democratic Party. They dictate what happens. Well, you know, here's a case where, you know, there could be some fracturing here because both um, Jim Clyburn and Bernie Thompson, Democrat from Mississippi, uh, said that this was disrespectful for the voters of color, uh, that 
you know, South Carolina should be the first place for for him to address his candidacy. In fact, um, in the Hill, um, Thompson said uh, any serious Democrat would understand that the black voter is the backbone of the Democratic Party. Uh, so that's a pretty fairly serious charge levied against uh, Phillips. I don't know if it's fair or not, but uh, do you think do you see this as a partial fracturing of uh, the Democratic Party so early in the uh, election cycle? I see it as a pot shot against Phillips. No more, no less. They just want to marginalize him. And, you know, they don't want him crowding Biden. Uh, any is, port is that a storm. fair statement for them to come out against him on that point? I, I don't think it's fair. No, I don't think it's fair. I yeah. think it's kind of stinky, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, good point. Yeah. So let's talk about the ramifications of if, if if Phillips or he encourages some other candidate, like maybe Governor Newsom, uh, to throw their hat in the ring. Uh, time is of the essence. Uh, it, already, for to get on a ballot in many of these states, that deadline is uh, is is coming close. Uh, I think in Nevada, that deadline's already passed. It was October sixteenth. So, uh, to what degree, if 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 it's Phillips' desire to get other candidates to throw their hat in the ring, uh, to what degree will that be successful if we have a um, a closing date from all these different states to get on the ballots? You know, I was thinking the same thing. You know, the timing is so important in these things. And I would have thought at first, uh, you know, that Phillips' timing was just about right. Here we are. It's a year away, year away. It's, a, it's time to throw your hat in the ring. Um and he did. I mean, you got to give him credit uh, for his, what, courage anyway. Uh, he, he put himself on the line, changed his life and all that. Um, Newsom hasn't done that. Newsom is just kind of trying to get into the orbit here, the Biden orbit, um, so that if Biden can't run, then uh, my guess is Newsom would step up, you know, and, and run. Uh, you, and both of these guys don't have a chance unless something goes wrong, um, you know, with Biden. And, and right now, Biden looks pretty good. At least he looks good to the regular Democrats because he's done a pretty good job and he, he keeps addressing national issues. Uh, sometimes, um, you know, you wonder if he can get to first base without Congress. I mean, for example, um, he established a, a, a gun violence office, but it has no authority. Um, he established uh, this week uh, some kind of AI, you know, AI office, but it has no authority and no funding, I don't think. <clears throat> and so, you know, he's, he understands the issues, he tries, but without Congress, he can't follow through on anything new anyway. The other thing is that he's exposed to a very risky business overseas. If, if he loses, if Ukraine loses, and it would be largely because of Congress and um, Mike uh, Johnson, um, for lack of funding, uh, it's going to be on Biden, even if it's Congress that's withholding the funding. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, he just didn't do it right. The same thing as Afghanistan. You can hear the argument already. The same thing, Afghanistan, he gets into these situations and he, he can't pull it off, um, <clears throat> which is not really a valid criticism, but it'll hurt him bad if he loses Ukraine. Likewise, if his moves in the Middle East don't work out, and they may not, it's a really difficult situation politically, you know, geopolitically, just really difficult. And if he loses, if it all goes off the side, it's going to be on him. Um, and there are so many other hotspots in the world where it's going to be on him. I mean, take China and the South China Sea and all that. That's, a, that's getting worse by the day. And we, we don't pay all that much attention to it because we're fascinated with domestic politics and with Ukraine and with, you know, Israel and all that. But the fact is, things are going south in the South China Sea. You could quote me on that, Tim. Things are going south in the South China Sea. <laughs> so uh, any one of these things could erupt in such a way uh, that the American political establishment, the electorate, would hold it against Biden, and that will cost him. So it's not just a matter of being fragile and old. It's not just a matter of these guys waiting in the wings for a time when Joe Biden, you know, loses his moxie. No, it's Joe Biden could lose his popularity because of any number of external factors 
not not necessarily his fault, but it could hurt him bad. What would you say to the Democrat who's right now their knees are shaking because they're looking at polling numbers that show Donald Trump actually in the lead uh, to win? What would you say to the, those Democrats that are going, what do we do now? Oh, hold the line. I mean, I don't, I don't really believe those polls. I'm sorry. When it comes down to it, you know, in uh, what, a year, a little less than a year. Ooh, yeah. Um, and people have to go and vote. I think uh, assuming that Joe, Joe Biden doesn't make a mistake or get blamed for something um, and assuming he's still reasonably healthy, um, I think, you know, he's he'll be the next president. Um, I also think that that um, the Trump Trump will continue in his uh, uh, his insanity, and you will see you will see you know what what the press is identifying, what his adversaries are identifying, is that he's losing it mentally. He doesn't have good cognitive function, and and I don't think that's a mistake or an exaggeration. I think it's true, and if it is true, it's going to continue. It's probably going to get exacerbated somehow. It's not just, you know, the pressure of all these trials and all these things that, that Trump hates. It's that he's losing it. You know, his life just tells you that he's losing it. And, and I think uh, there'll be more of that before November next year. So at the end of the day, whatever the polls are saying now, and I don't believe them, I'm sorry, we've learned enough not to, not to believe polls. And also, even if they're right, they change. And there's, you know, between now and next November, man, there'll be so many things <laughs> that could and will change the polls. So um, I, I, I wouldn't worry about that. I think uh, the likelihood is that if Biden doesn't slip somewhere, uh, he will he will take that election. I think that uh, I think that Trump Trump is doing a great job at ignoring and and. Um, you know, uh, marginalizing the all the trials against him and uh, all the bad news that comes out against him, and his base continues to support him no matter what. He could shoot somebody in Fifth Avenue. It's true, um, but that's a small group of people, I think, relatively speaking. And most most Americans, even Trumpers, uh, you know, they're they're mostly rational. I think, um, at least on this kind of thing. And 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 when you have to posit both of those candidates together, all things being equal, next November. Now, those polls aren't going to apply. The likelihood is that uh, uh, the people are not going to support a madman. Well, since you love polls so much, <laughs> let, let me throw out a poll for you. <laughs> uh, this one came out Tuesday. Uh, NPR Marist uh, National Poll released yesterday that, hey, if there was someone else out there um, that could detract numbers, it's not just... Uh, Dean Phillips. We're also talking about Robert Kennedy Jr. Uh, but this poll actually shows that Kennedy Jr. would pull numbers away from Trump versus Biden. And I don't know if that's really been discussed out there a whole, bo a whole lot in the media. Uh, he seems to attract the more extreme conspiracy theorist type voter. Certainly that would be on the Republican uh, side of things. In fact, the numbers show that um, if there was an election, Biden would win the election by 44 percent. Trump would be 37 percent. And Kennedy, believe it or not, would get 16 percent of the vote and undecided 3 uh, percent. Since you love Trump, uh, polls so much, what do you think about this poll? Not much. Not much. OK. <laughs> I'm re really, I mean, I, you know, it doesn't it doesn't take a whole lot of reading uh, to find out that that Kennedy is a disgrace to the Kennedy family and legacy. And John Kennedy and all the, the Kennedys who were popular. Um, this Kennedy is out of his squash. Uh, he's not a Trump and he's not a Kennedy. What is he? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, 60%. Now, let's say he got half of that. 8% could certainly sway. Uh, uh, if it was detracting from, the, from Joe Biden, that would be certainly enough to push Donald Trump ahead again. Aren't you? Are you concerned about that? Uh, yeah, if I mean, not that, what about Joe Manchin and the no? Now we don't know where Joe Manchin is in this all this mess, but uh, he's still considering putting his hat in the ring as the no label candidate. Uh, let me say that if Kennedy gets eight percent, I'll, I'll I'll buy you a pizza. 
Um, we don't do bets anymore because I've lost so many times, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we stopped with the pizza bets. Let me only say, too, that uh, Joe Manchin somehow has faded, you know, from popular awareness and um, and for good reason. I think when when you look and you analyze what he did or didn't do uh, in his role as the the coal uh, the coal king of of where West Virginia, mm-hmm. it was it was really stinky. It was awful what what he did, and I think that even even the people in West Virginia who presumably benefited by his votes or non votes and his machinations in Congress are going to realize that he was a nothing burger. And I don't think he's going to run, or if he does run, I don't think he's going to get any votes. Okay. That's you know, the Fidel uh, poll. Yeah, that's fine. Um, back <laughs> by pizzas. Um, <laughs> let's, you know, let's look at something here. You had mentioned John McCain and his pick of Sarah Palin. I think, and Steve Schmidt certainly would agree, that was a major flaw on Steve Schmidt's part and John McCain's to be in such a rush to find a um, VP running mate, and they didn't do their background homework uh, on on Sarah Palin, and it was certainly a, a heavyweight on that ticket. And I, I I personally feel that it was a contributory effect that why John McCain did so poorly in the election. Uh, if 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 the emphasis is on Joe Biden and his frailty, be it mental or physical, doesn't that emphasize or amplify? Uh, his current VP running mate and current vice president, Kamala Harris. Doesn't that put pressure on would-be voters that uh, if anything goes wrong, that it would be Vice President Harris running the country? Oh, I totally agree. Uh, she she doesn't have it. She doesn't have it in terms of skill uh, or analysis or sensibilities. She doesn't have it in terms of popularity or following. Um, it's not a question of, uh, you know, her extraction at all. She just doesn't have it. Um, and maybe he he hasn't let her out of the cage all that much either. And sometimes you have to let the vice president get out a little if you want to, if you want to count on that as a, well, as a I, I think she would, I think she was out of the cage when it came to the uh, border issues. She was out of the, she was definitely, given free reign to handle that, and uh, it failed miserably. That was her first mi- miserable uh, failure as a vice president. That was her project. It's a, She's a, a real detriment to him um, okay. because people, you know, first of all, there is a racial aspect here. Do we, you know, can you got to see those guys in the South? They're not too interested in having a half black, half Indian president. That does not turn them on. Um, but the other thing um, is that she's a woman. And the other thing is that she hasn't really demonstrated a whole lot of skill. And it would be pretty scary if he died in office. And hey, you know, he's not gonna if he wins, he's he's gonna stay there until he's 86 years old. I'm not saying that's old, you know, to some people that's young and vital, but for him, I don't think I don't think he's gonna be young and vital at 86. Um, and so yes, there's a fair chance statistically, actuarially. Um, that, you know, she could accede to the office as vice president, and that is pretty scary. On the other hand, what do you do about it? Now, he, you know, he could have tried to trade her in, you know? No, that wouldn't work. Why do you say that? Oh, come on. Uh, I could hear Jim Clyburn right now. That doesn't mean you can't find somebody else who satisfied Jim, Jim Clyburn. I mean, I, you know, if, if Jim Clyburn were here with us today, we could probably convince him it's not a good idea to have Kamala Harris run again and that Biden should get, you know, somebody who can help him more. And, and that person does not have to be, um, you know, a, a wasp. That person could be, uh, you know, somebody very diverse, too. And and you could probably convince Jim Clyburn, if he was sitting with us here today, that there's other alternatives to make it better for Biden. Um, but Biden doesn't want to do that. You know, he wants to be— Okay, uh, let's, let's address to, that. Yeah. Let's address that. I call it the Diane Feinstein, Feinstein syndrome. What is that? She wouldn't leave office. She oh. was incapable of performing the, the, the duties of her job. <laughs> 
and she died in office uh, just recently. And, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but, you know, at what point does a politician say, I'm not functioning well, and, but I'm going to sit in this chair because I like the trappings of the office and I think I'm doing something good for my constituents. But really, are you really doing a, your, your constituents a favor by just hanging in there and uh, not being effective? I totally agree. Hey, you know, with all respect, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, same thing. And look what Perfect. happened to that seat. Perfect. OK, you there know? you go. That's the other one. You know, I mean, uh, with modern medicine, you we can live longer, but that doesn't mean we're sentient uh, when we get into those, you know, uh, longer years. And and I think that uh, Joe Biden is an example of that. And it would be really terrible if he went Blanco, um, you know, in the second term. Um, he needs he needs to revitalize his 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 ticket. And, uh, you know, you, you say, well, why, why did he do that? Well, because he, he wants to go slow and steady, no, no, no disruptions. Uh, if it worked the first time, it'll work the second time. And, and um, he's not really addressing the concerns that are so obvious. I mean, if he's got these smart people around him in the White House and in his campaign, they would tell him, you know, she's, she's not helping and she yeah. can't help. Got to find somebody else. Now, the problem, too, is that if she's vice president, she has a certain amount of clout. So if he says to her, "Hey, hey, uh, Kamala, how about how about switching out?" She could say to him, "Hell no, I want this. I'm a vice mm -hmm. president, and I'm presumptively your, you know, your vice presidential candidate. Get out of my way. And and if you want to fool with me, I'll make stink. I'll hurt you." Well, let's you know, let's go down that road you just suggested because that was my next question. That is. What to prevent um, Biden, who I obviously he must recognize, even by poll numbers or, or not poll numbers, that uh, she is an anchor a bit on his, on that ticket. So what's to prevent Joe Biden from getting uh, Clyburn and uh, Vice President Harris in a room and say, hey, um, if it came from you that you were no, ling no longer interested as running vice president, what about Secretary of State? Or another prime, you know, piece of the uh, the administration. Is there anything that interests you? Vice President really doesn't do a whole lot uh, in the any administration. Um, I think Dick Cheney is the exception to that. But uh, what about a, a little, you know, backroom deal like that? Yeah, that's a great idea. You should send him a note immediately. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, I don't need to. They already watched Think Tech Hawaii. <laughs> She could be on the Supreme Court. There'd be lots of things that would be better for her career-wise and, you know, and, and in terms of her own legacy, if she got out of that. Uh, she may or may not want to do that. And Clyburn, as you pointed out, may or may not want to do that. He may be wedded to her. Um, but, gee, that would, be a, that would be a great idea. And then Biden would have the freedom of get somebody younger, more vital, more, more interesting to the electorate, to his supporters. The problem is, you know, they think about it that the president, you know, he can only advocate for this, uh, for somebody else or, or for that matter, for Kamala Harris. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, the, it's the party. It's Clyburn and his friends and the people who, you know, are running the Democratic Party and have conventions and the like who will determine who the vice presidential candidate is. And if there's a disagreement about that, it's very destructive uh, to Biden and the party. You don't know until you try, <laughs> right? Maybe you should. You've got you got three months to get some folks in the room and say, how can we best hammer out a deal on this? But um, again, um, they're not watching me. They're not watching this show, well, and that's how it goes. <laughs> a stronger personality might try this, just as you say. It wouldn't hurt. Mm -hmm. um, but he's not a stronger personality, and he's you know we've talked about um, you know his. His um, what do you want to say? His his lack of balls on so many things, and and um, this would be one of them. Yeah. Well, all I know is that uh, it's best to avoid the McCain syndrome. And um, like I said, I think John McCain would have been the president had he had a much much better vice mm -hmm. VP pick. But that's uh, that's left to history. And well, it's, it's ironic because he died anyway. He would have died whoever, whatever office he was holding, whatever vice president he had, um, he died.
And, yeah. and you could tell there was something wrong. His face was all blown up. Remember that? Right, right. I, he's still a great American hero as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, I, no, I, I um... do not understand why the Trumpers tolerate Trump's insults to him and uh, to, um, uh, what's his name, Milley, and uh, to, you know, the, the military in general and the, and the, the wives of, of the people, you know, killed in action. I do not understand why. And that's a huge voting block. But he nevertheless insults them at every opportunity. Not going to the graves in Normandy, really? What's wrong with him? Not just you know, going I mean, to the graves, but calling them suckers and losers. Yeah, and, and, and of course, uh, this is a guy who it was a draft dodger. He was a draft dodger with that ridiculous uh, spur, what is it, bone spur in his heel? That was nonsense. His father got him out of the draft, and now he has the chutzpah to dump on the military. Yeah, true. Uh, you're not going to believe this, Jay, but we've run out of time. I don't believe it. I, I don't believe the believe polls. It. So that's why I, I had to bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you have any last thoughts on, on our uh, new candidate here to challenge Joe Biden, Mr. Phillips, Re Representative Phillips? Sorry, he's only a contingency. He's not a real candidate. And the chances of him head to head with Biden are really tiny, minuscule, zero right now. If, if Biden is weak or runs into trouble on some geopolitical issue or what have you, um, then maybe he emerges. So he should he should stay in there. And uh, you know, um, and handsome Newsom, you know, he should stay in there too. We need we need fresh fresh blood. Uh, just just in the just in case, you know. The other thing I want to say is that um, all of this, all of this is a tempest in a teapot, because we we have a non-functioning Congress. Um, we have you know till till the election and hopefully in the election it'll, it'll change the Democrat. But the selection of of um, Mike uh, Johnson as the uh, Speaker of the House is really a disaster. He's a trumper. He he voted against uh, you know the the the, the ballots on June uh, January sixth. He he's on the wrong side of every single issue that we can think of. Um, I I except Israel, but that's that's a religious thing. You know he's guided by his religion and the evangelical thing is it's not it's not really a good thing or a good motivation honestly, in terms of uh, assigning priorities to geopolitical issues. Um, and he's against, um, you know, helping Ukraine. I mean, he's on the wrong side of pretty much everything. Yeah. And wait till you see what happens under his, quote, leadership, end quote, now. So it's a year we have till even the prospect of a turnover in the House. Johnson is Trump. And he's going to wreck things. The two of them are going to work together. And Trump, strong enough to get him elected, is really remarkable. But now we're going to pay a horrible price, and we have to recognize that. And Biden is going to pay a price, too. The poor man has to deal with a Congress that is not only dysfunctional, but without a moral compass, who doesn't care, who they don't care about the American, the American experiment, the American people. Great points. Um... Ladies and gentlemen, we just witnessed for the last 30 minutes why I refer to Jay Fidel as our political Nostradamus. So with that being said, I'd like to thank my co-host, Jay Fidel, and I'd like to invite you next week to join us again at American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and until then, aloha.